Hello there. This video will show you how to do a chi-square test for independence for the second part of your Excel assignment. And what we're going to do, even though they didn't do this in our journal article that we're using as a reference, we're going to see if there's a relationship between sex, male or female, and political category, liberal, conservative, or moderate. Now, because sex and political category aren't interval or ratio variables, they're categorical, in fact, they're nominal variables, we can't run a correlation analysis to look at this relationship. We're stuck with a chi-square test for independence where we're going to look at a relationship between the frequencies in terms of how many people fit into each category. So for instance, male and conservative and male and uh, moderate, male and liberal, or female and conservative, female moderate and female liberal. So because we have two levels of sex, male or female, three levels of political category, conservative, liberal, or moderate, we're going to have six categories to all together to look at to see if there's a significant difference in the number of participants that fit in each category. So let's go ahead and go to our data. And you'll see here that we have our sex variable here, and then we also have our political category variable here. So before we can do this analysis, we have to create a joint frequency distribution table that has all the different frequencies for each um, combination of sex or political category. And we're going to use the pivot tables function to make this happen. So you want to go up to insert, pivot table, and then we're going to select political category and sex as our variables here. So just highlight those two. We're going to go to a new worksheet and then click OK. Once that new worksheet pops up, just right click rename and just type in chi square. Now you should have two tabs down here for your correlation and regression that you did earlier, but I started over in my data, so now I just have this chi square tab in my data. All right, now the first step that you want to do is you want to click on political category and then click on sex. You want to move that sex variable over to your columns instead of having it in your rows. And then you can move sex down to your values as well. So let me show you that again. Let's go ahead and uncheck everything. And you could, if you wanted to, you could just check political category, then click and drag sex to columns, and then click and drag sex to values. Make sure that where you see this down here, it says count of sex. If it doesn't, click the little arrow, go to value field settings, and make sure count is selected. Now here you'll see these ones, and this represents people who didn't provide their sex. So if you write, if you click on this arrow, we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to get rid of blank as well, and then just click OK. Now we've got a nice, beautiful table here. So if we look at this, these are our observed frequencies. So 34 females were conservative, 58 females were liberal, and 61 females were moderate. 31 males were conservative, 65 males were liberal, and 45 males were moderate. If you look at our grand totals here, these are also referred to as marginal frequencies. You can see that we had 153 females, 141 males. Those two numbers add up to 294. You can also see that across, not looking at differences by sex, just across the whole sample, we had 65 conservatives, 123 liberals, and 106 moderates. These three numbers also add up to 294. So these are akin to your observed frequencies in a chi-square analysis. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to copy all of this all the way up to where it says row labels, hit control C to copy, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hit the, the little arrow below paste, and I'm going to paste this special just as the values for our observed frequencies. Then I'm going to copy this again, control C to copy, click a cell below it, control V to paste, but this time I am going to delete these numbers in here. Delete. I'm going to keep my grand totals and you'll see why here in just a second, but this is going to be our observed frequencies and then over here we are going to compute our expected frequencies. So remember, for chi-square independence, 
The formula for your frequency expected is equal to the frequency for your column times the frequency for your row divided by the entire sample size for the study. So for instance, if we're wanting to get the expected frequency for conservative females, and remember, it's the expected frequency if the null is true, if there is no relationship between sex and political category, how many would we expect to see in that category? So to find that, we would take the frequency for that column, so for all females, times the frequency for that row for conservatives, and then we're gonna divide that by the sample size. So for all of these expected frequencies, our denominator is going to be 294, but you're just going to have a different, different frequency column and different frequency row depending on which specific cell you're looking at. So now that you've seen this formula, let's go ahead and use Excel to make that happen. So now we're going to program Excel, program a formula, to make our expected frequencies. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to do this manually for each one. I'm not confident to copy the formula down, but this will help reinforce how you get those expected frequencies. So remember, we're going to have to do equals to tell Excel we are about to do a formula. You want to do a left bracket, so hold shift and hit the 9, and then you're going to do the frequency for this column, star for multiplication, the frequency for this row, close it in a parenthesis. We're doing the parenthesis so that the order of operations takes place and you do the multiplication before you do the division. So we've got parenthesis, click the frequency column, star, click the frequency for the row, parenthesis, slash for division, click your sample size, enter. Do it again, equals parenthesis, frequency column times, now this is our frequency row because we're in a new row, parenthesis, divided by sample size, enter, equals, parenthesis, frequency for this column, times this frequency row, parenthesis, little slash for division, sample size, enter. Now we're going to do it for males, equal, parenthesis, frequency column, times, oh wait, I can't click this, how frustrating, let's fix this, so let's go back and delete. Let's make this male column larger so that it doesn't take up this whole space when we try to do our formula. So just go between the C and the D and just kind of click and drag, stretch it out. Now it should be fine. Equals parenthesis, frequency column times frequency row, parenthesis, slash for division, sample size, enter. Turn it again. Equals parenthesis, frequency column times this frequency for the row, parentheses, slash for division, sample size. Do it again. Equals, parentheses, frequency column, star for multiplication, frequency row, parentheses, slash for division, sample size, bam. These are your observed frequencies. These are your expected frequencies under the null hypothesis. Make sure that you copy and paste those into your assignment. Now we need to find out if there's a significant relationship between sex and political category using the chi-square test function in Excel. Now unfortunately, um, Excel doesn't give you the value for chi-square itself, but it does give you the p-value for the analysis or the probability that any type of relationship is just due to chance. Now before we run this analysis, let's kind of look at our data and see if we think we're going to get significant findings. So remember, a larger chi-square results when your observed and your expected frequencies are much different from each other. So it's more likely to get a large chi-square, or in other terms, a small p-value, low probability that results are due to chance, if you have drastic differences between observed and expected frequencies. But if your observed and your expected frequencies are pretty similar, then you're not going to have a large chi-square value. And in our case, our p-value is not going to be very low. It's going to be greater than our alpha. So we're not going to be able to reject the null hypothesis because we're not going to be able to say that there's a significant difference between these two values. So if I look at this, I'm expecting my p-value to be pretty high. There's a high likelihood that these results, this difference between these two is just due to chance because it's not a very big difference. 
Look, in our actual data, 34 females were conservative. And if the null is true, there's no relationship between sex and political category, then we would expect to see 33 female conservatives. Not really different from 34. In fact, if we round it, it'd be 34 anyway. Here, check this out. 58, not that much different from 64, right? If the null is true, we would expect to see 64 female liberals. And in our data, there was 58. Not that big of a difference. Same here, 55 and 61 are close. 31 and 31. 65 and 58. And 45 and 50. There's not a really big difference between what we saw in our data and what we would expect to see if the null was true and there wasn't a relationship between sex and political category. So let's just see if that pans out. I'm going to write P equals just so I know what I'm doing. And then here you're going to type equals CHI and then you're going to want to click on chi-dot-test. So just double click that. Before you double click it, if you click it, you'll see returns the test for independence, the value from the chi-squared distribution for the statistic, and the appropriate degrees of freedom. So let's double click it. The actual range is what we want to highlight first. So it's just these numbers. Don't highlight your totals, just highlight these six cells here, the frequency for each specific group. Then hit comma. Now we're doing the expected range under the null. Highlight those values. Hit enter, and our p-value is 0.29138171, or 0.291 for short. Now remember, if your p-value is less than your alpha, which will say our alpha is 0.05, then you have a significant finding. But if your p-value is greater than your alpha of 0.05, you do not have a significant finding, and it's just too likely that these results are due to chance. All right, now you know how to do a chi-square test for independence in Excel.